So in today's video, we are going to be talking about some new quick updates that recently came out for the Raspberry Pi 4, and honestly, they seem pretty cool. So the first one is going to be a new version of the Raspberry Pi Imager, and this version is going to be called Raspberry Pi Imager version 1.6. So I'm currently on Windows, I'm going to go ahead and download it for Windows, and it is available for Mac OS or Ubuntu, but if you are on something like Arch, you can install it from the AUR, or there are also snap packages available that can be installed them basically in any Linux distribution that supports snap packages but I'm on Windows right now I'm gonna click this installer right here it's gonna launch for me and I can go ahead and install the Raspberry Pi Imager so what is new in the Raspberry Pi Imager well for a little less than a year now there's been this really awesome part of Raspberry Pi Imager that you might have never known about since it is pre-hidden so if you hit control shift escape on your keyboard Nope, that opened up the task manager. I got that mixed up. So on Raspberry Pi Imager right here, you're gonna hit Control Shift X. That's the correct one. It takes a little bit to launch, but here we have it, guys. We have advanced options in Raspberry Pi Imager. And you may be asking, well, what's real special about this? Well, with the new update, we are able to set a username and a password before we even flash our Raspberry Pi 4, before we even boot our Raspberry Pi 4 up, which I think is pretty awesome if you're looking to use your Raspberry Pi 4 headlessly or you can change this to use always. If you're always like reflashing your operating systems, this could be something that could be pretty useful for you since you don't have to do that every time you reinstall an op this operating system on your Raspberry Pi 4. But let's go ahead and type in a username and a password to see if it actually works since we will be trying that. I'll type in my username right here and our password, I'll type in a new password. We'll try that out and see if it works and we can actually also enable SSH before we even boot up our Raspberry Pi 4, which is pretty useful if you are going to be using this headlessly. Like I said before, you can change the host name, disable overscan, configure Wi Fi, the Wi Fi country, and change the lookout settings. So, and you can even skip the first run wizard which I'll just do that right now. So I don't have to see any wizard when I boot up my Raspberry Pi 4, which is gonna be pretty useful. And if you always want to use this on the same time, like always have these settings, just keep it to always use, and then you won't ever have to think about it other than the first time. And there also is some type of telemetry, it says. I'm not really sure what type there is, but you can leave that or disable it. Eject media when finished, play sound when finished. So I'm gonna just leave those by default. I don't really, it doesn't matter to me. I'm gonna hit save and there we go. It's closed out right now. So if we wanna check that our information is still there, we're gonna control X and everything that we did is already here. So now what's the next update? Well, there now is a 64-bit version of Raspberry Pi OS available for your Raspberry Pi 4. And you may say, well, how do I access that? We'll go to Raspberry Pi OS Other, and bam, right here we have it, Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit. And well, why there has been a 64-bit version of Raspberry Pi, Pi OS out for some while, but now it is official, it's out of beta, and it is in the Raspberry Pi Imager. So I'm excited for that. It's great to see an official build of Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit for the Raspberry Pi 4. I mean, the beta version was official. Now this is just really out of beta. So let's try that out try that out on our raspberry pi 4 with these new settings so i'll hit it right here i'll hit choose storage oops didn't plug in my storage device let me do that real fast there we go we'll go choose storage and we'll choose our device right here oh I, how did i miss that guys there's this little option right here and this is something that i thought should have always been here because when we were on version 1.6 no one was gonna know that there was those advanced settings, but now that we have this little gear icon, most people, I mean, not most people, a lot of people will see this little icon right here and click to see, hey, what does this do? And then they'll be able to see and change these settings. So this is definitely a welcome upgrade. But I'm gonna go ahead and hit right, and then I'll meet you guys back up on my Raspberry Pi West desktop, and we'll see what changed. Is it better? What happened? So, see you there. All right, so I am on the desktop right now and it skipped the entire wizard thing. Like when you norm normally boot up Raspberry Pi OS, you have like that first set of wizard thing that was not there at all. And it just put me right into the desktop, which I think is really awesome to see that 
so far our Raspberry Pi Imager experience did work correctly. Well, let's see if it actually changed the username. So I'll click the terminal icon right here and we'll type in, whoa, and we don't even type anything. Right here it says Luke F. Renner at Raspberry Pi. So normally it would say Pi at Raspberry Pi if you never change the username. But since we changed it in Raspberry Pi Imager, it is by default set to my username. And I'm just gonna believe that the password changed as well. So that is really awesome to see just a change username in there. So I'm really happy about that. But I do wanna say one thing. So when I booted up my Raspberry Pi, it seemed to take a little bit longer to get to the desktop than if I hadn't changed any settings in Raspberry Pi Imager. And now that may be in my mind, but I just feel like it did. And that probably is because it was at changing these settings, doing more stuff in the background before it shot me into the desktop, which is fine for me if our experience is easier, which so far it feels a lot easier. I mean, not a lot, it's just simpler, you know? So let's take a look at NeoFetch to see if our system is actually the 64-bit version of Raspberry Pi OS. So we'll type in sudo apt install NeoFetch. We'll type in NeoFetch here, we will enter for Y, and bam, we will have NeoFetch up and running really fast. Alright, so we'll type NeoFetch in here real fast, and right here we can see that we still do have that Debian logo. So when Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit version was on beta, I'm pretty sure it also had that Debian logo. I'm not really sure why they haven't changed it to their custom Raspberry Pi icon that's on the 32-bit version, but you know, I mean, it's not a big deal. And it doesn't say Raspbian under OS, it still says Debian GNU Linux 11 Bullseye R64, so it is 64-bit. We are on the 5.10.92 kernel for the Raspberry Pi 4, and we have 1,352 packages by default. So everything else here is pretty similar. I mean, the CPU is clock T 1.8 gigahertz by default, just like the 32-bit version of Raspberry Pi was bullseye, which is a really cool to see on here as well. But I mean, there really isn't that big of changes in Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit. I will link the change log down below if you want to look through it and see if there's really any significant changes. Or I will also leave this video to Lee PSP's video over this, and he goes over some of the new updates and the change log and stuff like that. So I could go into video playback and stuff, but I'm gonna leave it here because, I mean. It's cool to see Raspberry Pi organization officially supporting it on the Raspberry Pi 4, and it may be useful for further projects, but for now, for me, it's not a game changer. But yeah, so let's take a look at Raspberry Pi Imager on top of this operating system. So I'll type in sudo apt install rpi-imager, and let's see if Raspberry Pi Imager works on here. So it does, because I knew that obviously, but still, and let's see if the advanced settings t um, tab works on our Raspberry Pi 4 if we already have the latest version. So we'll click right here, we'll go over to accessories and a fine imager. Bam, we have a Raspberry Pi imager version 1.7. Awesome. So if I hit Control Shift X, bam, our advanced option tab is right here, just like it was on my desktop computer, and it works just as well, which is really great to see. And you can use Raspberry Pi Imager on here just like you would do on any other computer. Click save and we have a lot of operating systems in Raspberry Pi Imager. It has come a long way since the beginning days and every day, I mean not every day, but with every update it seems to get a little better, more user friendly and it just has better settings that are more useful for everyday life. So I'm happy with how it's going and if you are let me know in the comments below. So if you thought this video was helpful please give it a like and I mean a subscribe would be awesome too so thanks for watching